And welcome back to Let's Play Digital Devil Saga. Last time we got through the game's uh, mod moderately lengthy intro, and we got our demon forms. So let's check that out. Surf has the demon form Varna. His uh, specialty is ice, and he is weak to fire. Heat has the demon form Agni. He is strong against fire, but weak against ice. Argilla has Prithithi. Uh, again, I might need a pronunciation guide for that. But anyway, she is strong against earth, but weak against force. And I'm pretty sure I mentioned this, but just to say again, Heat specializes in uh, strength and vitality, Argilla specializes in magic, and for my surf, I'm going to have him specialize magic. To an even greater extent than Argilla, though. Now, the last time we uh, got into a fight, it, the game said that Surf and uh, Heat satisfied their hunger and ate the enemies after they killed them. When you do that, the game will restore a slight amount of your HP, but not a lot. It's like 2%. I don't... I'm not quite sure why they bothered. I mean, I guess it's a nice touch, but yeah, it's really not much. But just to know, Argilla is refusing to eat any of the enemies at this point, so she will not get any AP and she will not get that small health back. So, it's not a big deal, but the major annoyance about it is that she's not going to be getting any AP for a while. And now that we have done our first encounter, we can get into random battles. Now hopefully this guy will let me show off the true extent of the press turn system. Well, he did, but he died. Whatever. I guess I can just explain it right now. When I hit him with Bufu, that was his weakness. If you noticed, real quickly, one of my press turn icons started flashing. That When you exploit a weakness... Oh, hold on. Oh yeah, now that's perfect. When you exploit a weakness, uh, the icon for your turn flashes and you don't lose it. That means you basically have an extra turn for your next person who's in line. And if you uh, exploit a weakness with the next person in line, then their turn starts flashing and you don't lose it. So basically what this means is if you can manage to exploit weaknesses with everyone, you get a second round of turns without actually having to uh, let the enemy go. So you definitely want to keep a variety of attacks on all your characters so you can exploit weaknesses frequently. Now as we can see, there's a guy over there and a switch. We're probably going to want to try and get over there. Okay, this is... Um, what's his name again? Anmoraki. And I believe he's also weak to ice. Yep. Can't really take advantage of the whole press turn thing right now, because the enemies are pretty weak. Now it's going to take a while to uh, get our AP built up because we don't really have any skills to make it go up faster, but once we do, we'll have better skills. I feel presence. Let's go. And man, now I feel stupid for going up those stairs. I should have just gone through here first. Oh well. Oh hey, now I get to show off the whole press turn thing. And yep, as you can see, the turn icon is flashing. I'm just using Venom Claw there because it's uh, stronger than the regular attack and just in case by some weird thing I don't manage to kill it, the poison status is very useful to have on an enemy. What poison does is that it takes a small percent, it takes, uh, well not a small percentage, but it takes a percentage of your HP off every turn, or rather every action you take, and when, uh, when you get to very low, poison can actually kill you. This is different from uh, later games in the series like Persona, where poison wouldn't kill you if your HP got low enough. Anyway, there's a new enemy here, Alp, I forget what her weakness is. It's not a particularly big deal, though. All the enemies here are very weak. Ah, uh, but uh, there was something to a note. You notice that that Anmoraki dodged, and uh, I lost two turns. If an enemy avoids your attacks, that means you lose two turns. But this also holds true for the enemies, and this is something you want to keep in mind. 
Now if you'll notice, uh, he got a critical there, and one of my press turn icons is also flashing his. Um, when you get criticals, it basically counts for the same thing as uh, exploiting a weakness, so criticals are also very useful for uh, giving yourself more press turns to play around with. And like I said, just going to be dumping everything into Surf's magic. Okay. Now, a lot of the walkthroughs I see for this game recommend that you sort of give Surf an all-rounder build and, and, like, switch between two stats that you're boosting every other level, and honestly, that's kind of a horrible build, because it'll create a character who doesn't really excel at anything, and you really don't have any reason to use them over other characters who excel at physical attacks and magic. Ooh! Okay, that's, that's important. Frozen. When you use ice magic, there's a chance that an enemy will be frozen. When an enemy is frozen, they uh, have a defense debuff applied to them, and all physical attacks that are uh, thrown at them will be critical hits. As well, it will completely get rid of any physical resistances that they have. So, if they resist physical attacks, if they nullify them, even if they reflect them, uh, physical attacks will hit them for huge damage. However, there is one drawback to free the freeze status, and that it weakens a certain set of skills, which we'll uh, detail about those when we actually get them. Anyway, let's head across this bridge. What do we got here? Mm, this is Basilisk, I believe. Ah, uh, here's the game, uh... Here's the game explaining the press turn system. I'm already ahead of you. Okay. Oh no, it's Cockatrice. Basil Basilisk is just a palette swap of this guy. <laughs> Alright, he's poisoned. That means his physical attacks are basically useless now. Although he might die from this. Okay. And once again, more magic! Don't worry too much, I will be boosting other stats occasionally, it's just I'm focusing mainly on magic. Now of course, since we brought that wall down, we can't get back across, but there's a ladder right over here. So, you can probably already guess the uh, gimmick of this level. We're going to have to deal with chasing Harley while dealing with those walls. Alright, more Alps. Eventually, I'm going to start cutting out random encounters, but they're not too bad right now. So, I can keep them in. Mad Rush right there is one of the first multi-target physical attacks we get. It's a, uh... Basically, uh, it just attacks a bunch of an enemies randomly. Unlike most multi-target attacks that you usually first get in Mega Ten games, the hits from multi-rush tend to are basically equal to the hits you would get from normal attacks. So that's pretty nice. Digital Devil Saga is a lot easier than the average Mega Ten game, but still pretty good. I like it a lot anyway. The reason I'm using Mad Rush so much is just in case I get a critical hit, the extra turn really helps. Ah, oh, that's actually something enemies very rarely do, but if you weaken them enough, they might run away on you. Heat's close to uh, filling out his AP bar there. It doesn't really show right now, but Heat basically focuses on HP and, uh, er, rather strength and vitality to the detriment of every everything else. So while the game sort of bills him as a fire user, he's not really good with fire because he has very low magic. However, because we're very early in the game, uh, it's uh, obviously the character's uh, preferences and stats don't really shine through too much. I'm going to be using as many save files as possible. I deleted some uh, old save files off my memory card to have the extra room. So, uh, yeah, you know, be 
you do an LP, you want to make a lot of save files just in case anything goes wrong. I'd really like to save this too because I got a lot of good stat boosts there. Anyways, over here we've got a red wall. If you remember in the last episode there were a couple of blue walls. I'm guessing that the red wall has a different way to be opened. Wouldn't be much sense in having uh, different walls if they all open the same way. Now the nice thing about Mad Rush is that it can occasionally hit an enemy more than once. That hasn't been happening too much, but, you know, it can happen. Oh, come on, Heat, you've almost got that mon mantra mastered. And over here is a yellow wall. Looks kind of orange on my computer, or uh, rather on my TV. Anyways, what's over here? Looks like we found the back entrance to Vatistana. Hmm. There isn't anything we can do here right now, but there's an item over here. Another Soma drop. This game is actually pretty generous with uh, good healing items, so while it's still a good idea to stockpile a lot of them, some of the lesser, greater healing items, if that makes any sense, uh, you can just use a bit more freely, because you get a lot of them. Anyways, that back entrance doesn't serve any purpose for now, but it helps to get the uh, better items earlier. As early as you can, really. Just an uh, important thing to note, don't worry about running into any encounters when you get to the entrance, it, it's not something that happens. Hey, Cockatrice. He wasn't a boss or anything, he's now just a regular ass enemy. Okay. And there we go, he has mastered his mantra. So he learns a couple new skills. Here's the game describing what the Atma points are. Anyway, when a character learns skills, you just go to the set screen, and you just set them. We'll set his uh, new Agi spell and Void Fire skills. For the most part, I'm going to be sticking to physical attacks with heat, but uh, when an enemy... Oh, got some guards. But when an enemy is weak to fire, I'll be using that. Okay, so th now the game's telling us about those void skills that you've probably noticed. When we use the void skills, a shield against a particular element is put up against our party. So if these uh, enemies use ice attacks, the, uh, vo the ice void will uh, completely nullify it. We can get uh, better void skills later on, and the better your void skills, uh, the more press turns the enemies lose. You see, when you cause an enemy to uh, hit something that you nullify, they actually lose the press turns, same as they would if they uh, missed an attack. Oops, so got a critical there. So, uh, keeping your resistances in mind is very important, and you can totally change the tide of fights if you bring the proper void skills. In this game, it's not particularly necessary to pay attention to void skills, but in the sequel game it helps out a lot more. However, in the beginning we don't have too many skills, so I'll keep the void skills on, just for the sake of having them. And here comes the Harley Chase sort of sub-thing quest. Anyways, he went that way, so we'll go this way, maybe we can head around and cut him off. Let's see, I think uh, that these Moris might be weak to fire. Oh, now they shield it, never mind, I'm a dumbass. However, they're fairly weak, so I can just boop with this one and get rid of it. There are a lot of different enemies in all these games, so it can be kind of tough to keep track of all the little weaknesses, but at this point, it's not too big a deal. I'm surprised Venom Claw didn't poison there, I've been having pretty good luck with that. 
Yeah, Argilla has healing magic, so you don't have to worry too much about dying in this area. If you're uh, low on MP, just head back to that restoration node that I used. Okay, some more magic and a point of luck. I'm going to make luck my secondary stat for Surf. And actually, now that I think about it, this would be an opportunity to explain the different stats. Some of them are straightforward, some of them have uh, special things to them. Strength is one of the straightforward stats. It just determines the strength of your physical attacks, so the higher that is, the better your physical attacks will be. Vitality determines your defense against physical attacks, and also uh, each point of vitality gives you a few hit points. I think it's three hit points per point of vitality. Your magic is actually a very important stat, and it's a slight catch-all stat because it actually determines uh, many things. Uh, it determines the strength of your magic attacks, obviously. Uh, more points in magic gives you more MP. I think it's uh, 2 MP per point of magic that you get. And it also determines your defense against magic attacks. And uh, this actually becomes uh, important for Heat later, as because he has a low magic, magic stat, he also has very low defense against magic, so ice attacks can really mess him up. So, it helps to keep a Void Ice skill on hand if you're using Heat a lot. Agility uh, is a bit of a stranger stat in this game. I can I don't know the exact things that it does, but it doesn't determine turn order. Turn order is determined by uh, how your party is set up. So if I put Heat first, uh, he would go first. So what does Agility do? Agility uh, goes into determining your accuracy and evasion, I believe, and it also determines how likely you'll get the first turn. So if we have low agility, usually the enemy will be getting the first turn on us. So it helps to have a little bit of agility. And luck, uh, luck is a pretty good stat too, because it determines a huge number of things. It determines how often you get critical hits. It also determines the drop rate on an item, so higher luck on everyone means you got better chance of getting better items. And it also determines your resistance to get to status ailments, which is very important. And uh, it also factors into whether or not you'll be ambushed, so if you have a higher luck stat, you'll be ambushed less often. And in Shin Megami Tensei, getting ambushed is basically a death sentence in most cases, so definitely a helpful thing to have. Alright, let's head upstairs. Now, if this area is like the other areas, chances are there's a switch to bring up the walls. Okay, so if we remember, the Impusa was weak against fire, so let's hit her with that. Have our Gila do an attack, and there we go! Okay, Dream Haze uh, inflicts you with the sleep status. When you're asleep, you uh, recover a small amount of HP and MP per turn, but the next physical attack against you will always be a critical. However, when you get hit with a physical attack, you always wake right back up. However, as long as you're asleep, you're basically out of the fight, so it can be very annoying if you don't have a way to cure it. But it can also be a nice way to restore your uh, HP and MP if you uh, aren't close to a restoration node or a large karma ter terminal. Hmm, this is actually a fairly complicated enemy setup. I'm going to want to set up a Void Ice. Just because odds are good, those Impuses are going to get a turn. Yep, we'll be able to kill them both fat. Oh, and that one dodged anyway. As you can see, she didn't use an ice attack, but it's still a good idea to use the void ice anyway, because having your weakness exploited is not fun. Especially for Heat, he doesn't do too well against having his weakness exploited. Ooh, from that battle we got an ice blast item. The Ice Blast just uses a low tier ice spell on all the enemies. Pretty nice. And Surf mastered his mantra, so he learned some new skills. Here is Health Thrust. It is a 
basic physical attack, not going to be too useful to Surf because he's a magic user. And then there's Devour, and this is actually very important. Devour is a hunt type skill, and what it does is it allows you to devour the enemy whole in battle. And if you do this, then the character who devoured the enemy will get a huge boost in AP. And hunt skills are counted as physical skills, but they're also their own unique element, the hunt element, obviously. And hunt is neither resisted nor uh, weak to, or nor is anything weak to it. So it can be used on effectively everything except bosses in order to devour things. This makes hunt skills pretty useful, especially the later ones that have chances of doing things like just instantly killing the enemies outright. Ooh, charge shot. That is a new type of ammo. Ammo hasn't become relevant yet, but we'll definitely be seeing some of it later, because the game does have a sort of forced tutorial for that. Ammo is something we only use when we're in our human form and we have to resort to our guns. Enemies can ambush you, and if this happens, they then you will be stuck in your human form as you are not able to transform in time. This doesn't really happen that much in this area, but it is something that will happen later on. Curiously enough though, if your agility is high enough, you can be ambushed and still get the first turn. It's kind of funny. Okay, let's go over here and hit the switch. As you can see, if we had let Harley just continue through here, he would have gone through that door and we would have had to start to chase over again. However, since we brought the wall up, he goes into another room and that room leads into a dead end. Always exploit the weakness. Actually, let's show off Devour. This is useless to use right now, but uh, when you have a mantra that you can get AP for, uh, it, it is a good idea to do. Now you notice that the Empusa had a weird status effect there. That was the Frightened status. When you uh, hit an enemy's weak spot, they uh, have one of their attacks nulled, or you get a critical on them. Uh, they become, there's a chance they'll become frightened, and when they do that, the damage of hunt type attacks is tripled. So the basic, one of the major basics of hunting is that you want to keep exploiting enemies weaknesses in order to get them frightened, as that'll allow you to hunt them. Now it's pretty useless right now, also a new enemy, because we've already filled up our uh, mantra. But when we have more mantras to master, it'll be a very handy thing. These guys are, are blobs, and they're weak to a lot of magic. So we can just nail them with uh, all our spells, and they'll go down pretty easily. As you can see, Heat's magic is a lot weaker than Surf's. Heat seldom puts any points into his magic, which is why I kind of prefer another character we get later who isn't as good at, at physical attacks as he is, but has be much better magic. And I kind of like to make him into my physical attacker. And this is the door that we blocked off. So we're going to have to go around to get into that area. Now you may have noticed that little thing in the top left corner. That is the solar noise, and that isn't too relevant right now. We'll talk more about it later. Ooh, these guys are all frightened. Nice. Not going to bother hunting them though, I can do more damage with Bufu. As you can see, the blobs are resistant to physical attacks. So you can't just uh, focus primarily on physical attacks because there will be enemies that resist them, and there will also be enemies that just outright are not vulnerable to physical attacks. They'll nullify the damage completely. And in very bad cases, they can actually reflect your physical damage back at you. So you want to... Variety is key if you want to get through this game. More of these guys. Don't they ever quit? 
Oh, that was easy. Never mind. Okay. I don't think there's anything in this room to get from a treasure chest object thing. You know what? I'm actually gonna try something real quick. I'm going to actually revert, and let's see if, uh, if I remember this right. Aha! Here we go. Now, if a character has the... If two characters have certain skills, they can perform a combo attack, and the combo attack will allow them to use their skills together to make a new, more powerful attack. And when you have two characters... If you have one character who's in the human form and another character has a void skill, those characters can do a gun combo. For Surf, this is the Ice Shot. And as you can see, that did a hell of a lot more damage than Bufu did. Now, it's kind of useless at this point, but I just wanted to show it off. Now, as you can see, uh, when you're in your human form, you have to use your gun. And the gun is actually a separate type of attack from a physical attack. It's a gun attack, specifically. Or, obviously. And gun type damage is determined by your ammo, and I think it is completely independent of your stats, although I may be wrong on that. Surf has a handgun. The handgun has good damage, a uh, good accuracy, and actually a very high critical rate, so out of all the guns in the game, it's probably my favorite. Anyway, we need to catch up with Harley. Each character has their own unique gun. Heat, for instance, when he's a human, he has a grenade launcher. His grenade launcher is easily the worst gun in the game. It hits all enemies for very poor damage. Kind of sad, really. You know, grenade launchers are always the cool guns in the video games, but not here. Alright, nothing that way. It looks like we've got him cornered. However, I don't think he's too keen on talking to us. Hmm. Hey, there's something down here. Let's see, in this strange object we have... A revival gem. A revival gem is like a revival bead, it's also a revival item. However, the revival beads only restore about one third of your health when they revive you. The revival gem restores all of it, and that makes them incredibly useful. And another chakra drop. We haven't been using any of our MP healing items yet. Generally, you want to conserve your MP, MP healing items for when you really need them. Actually, something uh, I'd like to note about battles is that whenever you get a battle, you're being judged by the Karma Society, the people who rule over the junkyard, and they evaluate you based on your performance in battle. If you manage to kill all the enemies in one turn, then they give you more Maka than you normally would get. Or rather, they give you the most Maka you can get. I believe for uh, each turn, it's a... Uh, you lose 25% of your Maka up until the third turn, where you just get a, the lowest amount possible. So say I took more than that first round to kill those enemies, then I'd probably only get 90 Maka, I believe. I don't, I don't remember how exactly the formula works, but I think that was it. Also, there's a penalty to your Maka if you uh, are killing enemies that are a lower level than you. Again, it's a 25% penalty. Aw, oh, just as I was about to save, too. Oh well. Easy pickings, I say. Oh, good one, Heat. Alright, but we are just before the room with Harley. I'm going to save, because 
he's pretty uh he's pretty shaky we don't he's pretty flaky we don't know what he's gonna do he may try to fight us however we'll talk to him in the next part as this video has been going on for a while so until next time see ya